Hi there, welcome to Chetu.org YouTube channel. Recently I was looking at a chart from economist.com and that got me thinking about this top 100 cities comparison. It is an Excel chart that we are going to talk about now, but first let me show you the chart that economist people have made. So this is something that I have uh, seen in on economist and uh, what they do is I think uh, once or maybe twice a year they they do some sort of an exhaustive study on best places to live across the globe so this is their recent report where they are saying you know it's about a couple of months old but uh, you can see that uh, these are the best cities to live uh, based on the livability index which is uh, a composite number that they calculate after analyzing various conditions for example uh, you know stability of the city how how affordable it is and how much accessibility is and what kind of job opportunities are there and all, all sorts of things how hygienic it is etc etc and as you can see you know all the top 10 uh, places are taken up by these uh, Western countries like Australia, Canada, and uh, New Zealand and Finland, and uh, really there is no surprising part in that. But when you scroll down a little, you would see this uh, city livability index visualized in. At best, I would call this as a mishmash. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. This of a visualization. What they have done is they have uh, tried to pictureize or try to depict the cities on the scale of 0 to 100 uh, the current ranking in the in the in in this column and the previous ranking on that column and showcase what kind of a change has been exhibited so you could see that uh, for example Adelaide Australia uh, has improved its ranking compared to 2009 uh, by slight bit I guess maybe about one percent or two percent like that we we can't be really sure so livability has increased those cities are grouped here livability has no change uh, those cities are depicted here and livability has decreased those cities are depicted here so this is a this is according to them a way to explore this data and understand how uh, livability has changed between 2009 and 2014 within the span of five years how various cities have fared and to me this looks like a really complex piece of visualization understanding what this is saying and trying to come up with any meaningful conclusions is really hard because to begin with the labels are all over the place there is no one consolidated listing of the cities and uh, it requires a lot of reading in order to gauge where the things are especially when 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 we talk about data like cities or countries or states or political parties or sports teams those kind of things where people have favorites right uh, for example being an indian i would like to look for all the cities in india and how they fared with respect to the rest of the world and this particular visualization really makes it hard for me to pinpoint those cities uh, of course I could see that there is New Delhi India here and Mumbai India and I don't need to look at this chart uh, I have been living in India for a while so I know that uh, some of our cities are let's say not as livable as Vancouver Canada or Adelaide Australia <laughs> okay uh, but uh, you know uh, let's say you are living in Copenhagen or um, Stockholm or Washington DC finding your city in in this listing could be really hard uh, you, you would really have to read through all the labels before you could pinpoint that number the other challenge is although these lines look pretty and they kind of indicate positive change and negative change uh, they're really hard to understand I mean what kind of a decline is it from here to there first up I won't know if it is uh, s between 60 and 70 so I'll probably have to assume that that's 62 or something like that and here it's 40 to 50 so I would have to assume it's maybe 44 so from 62 to 44 is the decline and that on percentage terms uh, would amount to something like um, 
about uh, 16 points on the rate of 62 share roughly 25 percent decline is that but this takes a lot of mental calculation before we could narrow it down to that so I find this chart a really poor visualization at best okay so what I thought is instead of criticizing them why don't I recreate this chart uh, in a different way represent the same data in a different way so that we could understand it better and also ask some sort of uh, questions and get instant answers so my first uh, instinct was to actually download this data and play with it turns out economist makes this data available so I went through a lot of steps of registering in their EIU website which is I think uh, economic institute of something <laughs> um, where uh, you know they they collect this data and maintain it so I went there and I registered and in order to download an Excel workbook that contains this data turns out it costs five thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars well that's quite a little bit more than I was hoping to pay I was really thinking maybe the data is available for free if not for free maybe for a few dollars but not necessarily as much as I would buy you know I would pay for a new car so I thought hey why bother with this data when I can make up some numbers in order to explain how to visualize this better of course we could generate random numbers but I thought since I run a website and we do get visitors from all over the world why don't I take a look at the top hundred cities uh, in the month of September 2014 and in the month of September 2013 so same month last year and compare the top hundred cities uh, between those two years and see how changes have happened and visualize them so it's in a way similar data uh, but different numbers in different cities so what I did is I collected the data and I got all the details here first let me show you the chart uh, I won't call this a chart it's more of a glorified table but I think uh, for this kind of data tables are really good so here we have uh, the data for 2014 and 2013 so this is how many visits we are having in each of the cities and you could see that uh, London is our topmost city in 2014 okay so currently this list is arranged in the largest to smallest order on the visits column okay and uh, you could see that London is our best city but what if I want to see what happened in 2013 I'll just select that and instantly that will be sorted and I can see that London is still our best city even in 2013 uh, but I think uh, some of the other cities would change for example uh, we end up seeing Mumbai or Sydney or Singapore or Melbourne or Houston or Hong Kong and Chicago so the listing of cities changes because now the they are arranged in the 2013 order what if I just want to see them in alphabetical order because I would like to really look for my city name I just click on city and this is arranged in alphabetical order uh, and uh, you know we just change the sort order to A to Z instead of Z to A and that will show me in the sort order alphabetical order the city names and you could see that a city like Adelaide uh, has about 1500 visitors this year and 1400 visitors last year and there is a change of six percent I have also highlighted certain rows in green color so I have currently selected highlighting to down that means whichever cities have gone down in performance I want to highlight them uh, to see what is happening there I could also highlight the up cities or I could also highlight the cities that are in in means that city showed up new this year it was not part of the top 100 last year but it is part of top 100 now out means this city Athens for example is no longer in our top 100 list in 2014 it was part of 2013 list and if I say nothing no city will be highlighted and we will we'll go back to this uh, zebra lining which will make it uh, make reading the report easy so as you can see we can sort by any any column we can sort by city uh, visits in 2014 or visits in 2013 or percentage change and uh, change the sort order uh, I could sort this by smallest to largest or largest to smallest uh, so that we could really drill down and understand the numbers and look at them in a meaningful way so this is uh, the kind of visualization 
visualization i think that really works because this is all raw data and numbers there is really no point in plotting those squiggly lines or straight lines from one point to another you know it might look pretty but in my opinion reading that chart is really hard whereas if you present the data in in a table along with some options for sorting and highlighting and uh, you know provide visual cues for percentage changes that itself is really good okay so this is the visualization that i recommend if you are keen to know how this is done i encourage you to download the workbook uh, or from chandu.org just see in the youtube description of this video there is a link for the article where you can download the file so download it i'm going to briefly explain how this is done the first thing that i have done is i went to my google analytics which is a analytics software a statistical software that uh, that i use on my website so it silently tracks all the visitors and they maintain the visitor cities in one of the reports that google analytics generates so i went to my google analytics i set up the time frame as september 2014 and downloaded the top 100 cities so that data is here these two columns okay likewise i i changed the time frame to september 2013 and downloaded the data so those two columns so this table contains 100 items and that table contains 100 items okay so you could see that uh, this is the data that we have then what i did is i added a d visits column uh, duplicate visits basically what we are trying to do is take the number of the visits and add a very very small running fraction to it the purpose of this is if at any point two cities report the same number of visits our sorting mechanism will go for a toss in excel because of the way rank formula is defined in excel so to overcome that uh, we are using this for example uh, i think uh, here is a couple of cities berlin and bodmin both of them reported 1159 visitors now if i rank on this column the rank for that and this will be same and then using that rank i try to retrieve the city name both times i will end up retrieving berlin and i won't see bodmin in my list this is because the way index match formulas work and the rank formula works it's a little bit of longer theory that uh, probably this video is not the appropriate place to discuss it um, but you understand uh, that uh, we are not really changing this number all uh, all we are doing is we are really adding a very very minor fractional amount to it so that we could uh, we could make them appear like two different numbers although they are they are one and same from an output point of view okay so i do that uh, on this table and that table and then now uh, we we name this as cities 2014 as this table and uh, cities 2013 as that table then what i did is i took all the city names from both tables pasted one beneath another and uh, removed the duplicates so i ended up with a list of 113 cities Uh, these are the total cities across both lists okay this is a manual step uh, you know take the city names and paste one beneath another and remove duplicates uh, if you would like to automate it you could use a macro or you could also use power query which can automate steps like this uh, but from an ex exercise point of view i think it doesn't make a lot of sense to automate that step so i went with uh, a simple copy paste and uh, going through the data and remove duplicate button So once the duplicates are removed we just calculate the visits for each city in both years using a bunch of sum ifs formulas what we do is we sum up the visits for london in in this table sum up the visits for london in this table we could also use a v lookup formula but in case of a v lookup formula let us say a city like granada doesn't appear in the year 2013 then the v lookup formula would throw a hash and a error and we'll have to write a, an if error formula to turn that into zero whereas sum if formula would naturally throw up zero when when the value is not found so i find sum ifs approach slightly better in this situation so we use the sum ifs and extract the d visit column and print it here you could see the running fractions there and uh, likewise once these two numbers are there we calculate percentage change 
this is also very simple if one of the numbers happens to be zero that means that city is not in in 2014 or in 2013 so it's either a new city or it's a no it's a city that got removed from the list in such cases we will simply uh, not calculate the value this is done by using an if formula okay again examine the workbook file so you can understand likewise i also calculate the type of the city that is whether it is an up city or down city whether it is a new city or uh, it's a city that was removed likewise whether the city has exhibited no change again all of this is done using a bunch of if formulas on these two numbers once that is done once all of this data is there we just uh, rank this data automatically through formulas based on the ranking column and ranking order ranking column 4 means we are ranking on the percentage change column ranking order 2 means we are going to rank it on the uh, from the largest to smallest order I believe okay so using that kind of a logic and rank formulas we just uh, rank all this data and once they are ranked we generate an output list using index match formulas and plug this output list here using cell references okay so it's this data from uh, v6 onwards and that goes and sits there likewise w6 x6 so on and so forth anytime you click on these form controls in the background these numbers change uh, all of these three numbers and they will trigger the calculations to change and that will that will change the output so there you go in a nutshell how this is done once all of the numbers are here we just apply some conditional formatting on this column and uh, for for these highlightings and other things again we use a little bit of conditional formatting to highlight the rows that that have uh, true for highlighting okay so that is how we have achieved this kind of a chart again uh, in my opinion creating this chart from scratch could take anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes or maybe uh, slightly more than an hour depending on how how good you are with excel but this one is definitely worth the effort because you can quickly understand all the data make some meaningful conclusions as well as do some exploratory analysis whereas the economic economist chart is really an eye candy it doesn't help us understand much and uh, any kind of exploration is really hard okay so that that's that's all i have for you i hope you have enjoyed this lesson uh, go ahead and download the video download the workbook so that you could play with it and uh, you have an awesome day thank you so much bye bye